So let's talk about what's happening with corn and soybean and how you can get in on this. And it's easy to get in on quite simply. To help us understand this, Sal Gilberte from Tucrium Funds, he's the president and CEO, joins us once again. And I was just looking as we were coming into the segment, Sal, at where your CORN, the corn ETF fund, uh, was, and also the soybean fund, SOYB, both of those are essentially at their 52-week highs. What's driving that? Uh, supply and demand, and and quite simply, there's not enough. So, well, there's enough supply, but we have a declining balance sheet, which simply means the world is using more of these grains than it's producing, and we're projected to use more than we're producing. And there have been some surprises um, in corn. Your ending stocks, which is a metric that you figure out after you grow all of your corn and figure out what you had left over from the year prior, and then figure out what you're going to use. What's left over is called your ending stocks. You do that with any grain and. Corn Corn ending stocks have dropped um, from 1.9 billion in the United States, where where these things are priced, um, to 1.3 billion, call it 1.3 and a half billion bushels of excess, and that's that was an enormous drop, given that our usage is is going up virtually every year on the major grains. Um, the last time we got to the under a billion and a half, that would have been deemed okay. And now people are starting to get nervous because under a billion bushels on corn, um, people get very nervous. The story is soybeans. Soybeans, you've gone from 48 days supply in the United States um, at the end of last crop year to a projected 10 days of supply this crop year. And that that's unbelievable. I, I've seen soybean um, day supply down as low as, as nine. Um, but, but to get supplies drawn that low in the United States is really something. And remember, Brazil, the world's largest uh, exporter of soybeans, actually sold all their soybeans last year. And people turn to the United States, particularly China, they've drained us of our supplies. So we need, even factoring in a really good harvest, um, in fact, record, record yields, that the USDA is projecting, we still aren't really rebuilding those stocks. And that's why prices are higher. You're, you're, you're draining stocks down. Hey, so I want to ask you just about a larger uh, issue, I guess, that investors are watching, not only in the commodity space, but also clearly in equities at well. And that, of course, is that report that we got yesterday that President Biden is planning to almost double the capital gains tax rate. He has that potential plan of raising taxes on individuals, raising taxes on corporations. How does that affect not only the equities market, but also the commodities market? And does it make you want to change your strategy? Does it affect your strategy at all? Well, it, it doesn't affect our strategy with the with the ETFs because we're, we buy the futures and we just allow investors to participate if they believe the underlying commodities like corn or soybeans are going up. They buy our funds. If they believe they're going down, they sell our funds. We just we represent. Um, I mean, if you hold them longer term, like any other stock, you're going to have the same tax consequences. Um, more importantly, I think, is is the effect on farmers and small farms. The the um, you, you know, farmers generally have income that is that is is personal income even the income on their farm a small farmer may not have a separate company they may just run all the income through their personal um balance sheet, if you will, and they're going to get taxed on that. So you're going to you're going to raise taxes on farms. That's really bad. That raises the cost of doing business. You also there are rumors they're going to raise the step up basis, um, which didn't get any headlines yesterday. But Biden has been um, uh, pretty spot on and doing what he promised in the campaign. And he promised to um, get rid of the step up basis. And what that would do is not allow someone to pass their farm on without a tax consequence, which means people will have to sell their farms. And, and what you'll do is just drive small farms into, into the hands of big corporate um, farmers. That's what will happen. So th those are the impacts that we're, we're anticipating right now on that tax plan. For, for a retail investor who's watching our discussion with you, um, who may not want to get uh, too into the weeds with buying commodity futures that are tied to grains, where in the cycle, when you get a prediction that we're going to have record yields, in the harvest this year. And as you said, it's not a supply issue. It would seem to me that I might want to hold off buying because it seems to me we're going to have record and we got supply. I can't see the price going up. What am I missing? 
Well, traditionally, this is actually the time of year where your prices level off. So you, what you, what happens is you generally hit a seasonal low during harvest, and harvest, of course, comes in the autumn. So I think in corn, the first week of October often puts in a seasonal low. Um, and, and again, so you harvest, there's a big pile, if you will, picture a big pile of corn that every day the world comes and takes some out of. So that pile gets smaller and smaller and smaller, and it doesn't replenish until next year's harvest. So, you know, you go through winter, the pile's getting smaller, you're rallying off those autumn them lows. Um, when spring comes where we are now, and is it too dry? Is it too wet? Will, you know, will the, the seeds get in on time? Will it, and that's the timing basically determines your yield. And so people get nervous and you have these rallies happen um, and, and you often level off and it will determine if there's a drought prices will rocket higher. And that history has shown us that happens in, in July, at the end of June and July. If there's not, you generally drift lower towards that seasonal low. Now, with prices the way they are, and again, prices have, have gone this high because China has bought literally all the world's supplies. They had a crop failure and the, the overall use in the world is going up. And we have had um, some, some dryness um, in, in wheat areas, we're dry right now for planting our corn. Um, we're dry in, in southern Brazil, and the, the second crop corn got in late. So you've got a record soybean crop coming out of Brazil being harvested right now. You have really minimal soybean inventories in the U.S. Those two are balancing each other out at current prices. You did see another price spike this week. Um, but I, I think some caution is warranted here. I think you're right, Adam. And the thing is, you watch for a drought, and you know that prior to the 4th of July here in the U.S. If there's a drought, you will rally again. If there's not, you're going to have a chance to buy these things cheaper in the autumn.